Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, and welcome to another episode of Phanalysis, Avatar The Last Airbender. I am Callum, this is Matt. Hello. And this is Evan. Hello, everyone. Take us away of the episode summary for book two, episode two. <sighs> I should have said Flamey O. Hartman. But anyway, like, it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't change it. Anyway, um, anyway, so we're talking uh, Avatar... Uh, the Last Airbender, book three, episode two, The Headband, uh, which is one of the most charming little episodes in the whole damn show. Um, and uh, this is the one where Aang uh, accidentally gets enrolled in a Fire Nation school, and then it becomes uh, Footloose at some point. Um, <laughs> Footloose! It basically yes. is. Yeah, Footloose, yeah, the that, episode. Yeah, that's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> so, uh, this episode starts off with... Um, uh, are we going to do Aang or Zuko? We'll do Zuko first, first, because he's more interesting okay. in... Like, in you know, dramatic terms. Um, Plus it's, it's, okay, so, it's, like, it's briefer, so there's... Yeah, yeah, that as well, yeah. Quicker, yeah. Zuko's caught up in his feelings. He's dealing with guilt, and uh, he's conflicted over what he did with Iroh. So there's, like, this whole stop-starty, will-I-won't-I kind of uh, go-talk-to-uncle, like, vibe going on throughout overall, this episode. Overall, a fairly usual day for him. Yeah, I was going to say, yes, Zuko's yes. being a bit angsty. But it's nice to see, again, more of that development from the previous episode, the end of book three, where we're seeing this... Book two, sorry, where we're seeing this, you know, guilt and dissatisfaction. He's really struggling with that and of course what does he do when do what, what does he could do when he's struggling he goes to iroh um but it doesn't quite pan out the way it usually does um you know heartbreaking and well, um, it, it's kind of like one of those classic scenes where like a character is like visiting someone in prison and it's like they're trying to get the answers that they want but the other person is in res- like not very responsive because of what happened but at the same time it's like because this is something that's been done in like movies and tv for for ages at this point even at this point but at the same mm-hmm. time it's like i do felt like I, I do feel like that particularly in these scenes they did a really good job of like just selling the fact that like Zuko's not the only one who's like in pain right now despite yeah. the fact that how they presented because iroh actually doesn't have a single line in this episode but at the same time the way they animate him and just the cut the, the way it's you know cut but cuts between perspectives I really think they did a good job of selling the fact that this is something that's difficult for both of them, which obviously it would be because of what happened previously. Yeah, and he doesn't speak for a while. And I remember there was a lot of speculation at the time whether that was because of the fact that Maka had passed away between seasons. And they were wondering whether they were trying to get around the the fact that they didn't have a voice actor for him. Um, uh, But I've always heard that it was intentional that this is the way they wanted to play the beats anyway. So um, not, not to say that in any way that it's you know, convenient or a happy accident, you know, or it, it, that's not at all it's what I'm saying. Obviously, yeah. yeah, the guy died, you know, and he, he was uh, a hugely respected and impactful part of the show, and that's sad and everything. But, um, you know, the fact that they say that they were going to play it this way anyway, um, it, it kind of works out, you know. So, uh, but, uh, and the, the fact that they got, um, as, probably as good a replacement as you were going to get oh, in yeah, the end is, is also, yeah. yeah, couldn't have been that better, really. Yeah. You can definitely hear the the difference, mm. or I, I can at least. But he's he's doing his all, and it, it's more than just good. It's 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 very good, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I also love uh, on a lighter note. I love um, uh, Zuko's like uh, sorcerer attire. Like he's dressed up like a wizard. He's wearing <laughs> he's wearing like Merlin's shoes. He's got like yes, uh, yeah. dungeon master's cloak or whatever going. Yeah, the guard doesn't recognize him until he gets super close, and even then, he like just. Just like, well, hey, you know, something like, to a wall, and it's like you will not say anything. Everybody yeah. here has has pale skin and dark hair, and um, more than a few burns from the war. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like every, yeah. every like, everybody looks like Zuko here. But know? also, we like to see a bit of Zuko's anger as well. Like a lot of it, even coming out, mm. he doesn't usually lash out against random people like this very often. Um, people he's close to to an extent and when he's in battle obviously but just like this that like you can clearly see how afraid he is um not since like a, the first season yeah yeah, yeah obviously, he, he used yeah. to do it all the time de- yeah, yeah since his development i mean yeah in, in mm. book two yeah absolutely um but just yeah just how afraid he is emotionally speaking he's he's just that distraught and he's turning to this one source of of guidance and comfort that he has and has always had and for the first time in his life literally they are turning uh, i was turning his back on him um, with good reason and and good intent as well behind it, um, but it's still horrible to watch. You know, Zuko's trying his best. The second time he visits, because he, he struggles to get, he doesn't manage to get there. In the first time, he turns his back and walks away. Second time he goes, he even gets to the point where he's begging for help. You know, later on, um, and and I well, he's didn't turn. He's, he can't. And I do. Because, I do. I will. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Well, I'm just gonna say he's not saying the thing that matters, mm. which is I'm sorry I was wrong. He's trying to get his approval, and yeah. that is the one thing that he cannot give him right now. 
Exactly, so, yeah. And, and he's um, just distraught from it and, and really struggling. And, and it's breaking Iroh's heart to do it, which you see mm. obviously from the tears, but also before you actually see the tears when he's focused on his face, just the way he turns and the slumped kind of defeated form, he's he's sad, you know, he's not angry, mm. as is confirmed. It's, pain, it's painful for both of them. Mm. And what I really like too is like, even though like the way they portray Zuko's, Zuko, sorry, Zuko's conflict in those scenes, like even though you can see the raw emotion and just the thoughts that are going through his head, it doesn't necessarily come off as like childish, you know, it doesn't come off as like childish angst. Like it really just, well, to an extent, obviously, but like it, it really comes off to the point, like it's, it's genuine confliction that stems from a very real place. Like he's angry, but it's not like, you know, obviously he presents himself as being angry at Iroh, but you can immediately tell that that's not actually the source of his anger. And I thought that that was portrayed really well, you know, because yeah, it's, it's very, yeah. it's very easy to have scenes like that for it to, for to have a character raging for those reasons, but not really portrayed in a way where you actually buy it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well, it's also... The frustration and desperation is internal. He's angry at himself yeah. and that comes out later. He's aware of that. Yeah. They know that they're building towards the beach, which yeah. is where like, yeah. Um, and also, uh, if you, if you, it, it's kind of funny when like, when you like look at the, uh, uh, order of this, this is like, Okay, I go, I go there. I'm gonna go there. I'm not even gonna go there. Like he, he, he goes there and then he doesn't. He can't even bring himself to go in. Next time he goes in and he gets the cold shoulder and he's like, okay. Uh, then he comes in um, and he's like, he's like angry, right? And and he and he's he's pissed off and he's shouting at him and he's 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 insulting him, calling him crazy. And the next time he brings him, I brought you some chicken. You know, <laughs> just like, yeah. it's not you even know, the like, you don't like it, but it's better than yeah. prison. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Exactly, yeah. it's but not even like his favorite is, meal. <laughs> but this is like an abusive relationship right now. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like at this point, you know, it's like this is um that that that's the stage he's. Th these are the stages he's going through where like he's doing everything in a way to try to work the other person and not work on himself. You know what I mean? So exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh it's 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 very well written and realized. I just remember um uh almost laughing i think i did like even though it was like inappropriate the, 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 between the last time i saw you i was shouting at you here's some chicken i brought you some chicken yeah it's just like oh my god this guy like i, I mean like <laughs> you know, he's, this is so... he's desperate but and in I'm some doing ways a really that's good like job really realistic that. because yeah sorry. Yeah. yeah yeah evan you're right it's very realistic yeah yeah because it's like people who are distraught in that way will like you know switch emotions on a mm -hmm. dime in order to try and forge that connection any way they possibly can so oh, yeah. again, it doesn't it doesn't come off like he's faking it like it really does come off like this is he is literally trying every avenue he possibly can yeah, I, I hope I'm not coming off like I'm crit criticizing this scene. It's just like you can mm -hmm. see the phrase, you know what I mean, in the character, like just like how uh, warped this whole pocket of their, their existence is where he's mm -hmm. just really like um, on the outs there, you know, and with good reason. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. Uh, it, it culminates with him ultimately snapping a bit and just going, right, I've, I've just I've got to get rid of the problem. The problem is the Avatar. It's always the Avatar, right? That, that, that's well, Get rid of the Avatar and my honor will be restored and all will be well. And he kind of defaults back to that desperate mode and uh and hires sparky sparky boom man mm -hmm. um which will come up much later on um mm -hmm. but yeah so that's the uh, combination of his story for this episode and then he, he disappears for the next one as well but focusing back on the gang um they've arrived at a cave um <laughs> which they're going to be doing a lot uh, <laughs> as they do frequently uh. yeah um and they steal some clothes i love the new wardrobe the character character redesign or just the the web wardrobe redesign is fantastic for the fire nation it really suits each of them it gives them a nice new yes. look because it's been a while hasn't it yeah yeah i like um i agree with that um and i like that you can see the changes on like all of it well not really tough so much aside from her clothes i like her clothes that's not what i'm saying it's just the other ones like um their hair is all different. like even sokka has got longer hair than he's had mm -hmm. in the past you know so um it, it does show like the the changes of like their journeys and everything he just um, really gets are... a beard in this very episode it's a small detail where the hell did he get that by the way like they did like does he just carry them around and like i had the same thought i had the same thought yeah but um but no the uh as well it's a small touch but i like the the way each of them interacted as well and when they had to choose the clothes like it was very much it was their exact personality um katara is like oh i want that dress you know she's not bothered about the immediate morality but she just this isn't that big a deal to her Ang's like yeah but it's someone's clothes i don't want to steal and then goes for it and grabs one he likes um soccer's like nope not very analytical like picky about what he wants etc and toff just goes straight for i need to be able to see so tears through the soul she literally 
Like, it's almost like the soles of her why shoes even have the shoes? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I mean, uh, I don't know. Is it that unusual to see somebody walking around barefoot? In the I don't Fire Nation, so. probably. But yeah, it was mm, funny. Maybe, I, I like guess. the idea. But in this universe, they kind of play fast and loose with that, so it probably mm. wouldn't be that much of a big deal. But maybe. Um, you know what? I think if I saw somebody walking around with shoes without any soles, that would stick more in my mind than somebody oh, for just sure. with no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for no sure. Shoes. But yeah, <laughs> soles are on the floor, so it's, it should be yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you know, Matt and I live in California. Pretty much every other person, you know, yeah. walks around with either sandals or no shoes, yeah. shoes at all. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. So they they have that. Obviously, the fire fire nation closet. They go to get some food. Um. And in the process, Ang's wife inside. Um. Because he doesn't want any meat, and gets picked up by the uh the authorities to get sent back to school, which I just love as a concept. Which because he, yeah, he just so happened to be like yeah to take a school uniform. It's, it's a funny idea. Like he's just playing. You know, it's just playing druidancy and, uh, and not going and then oh what you should be in school it's, just, it's school hours we've not had to deal with that kind of reality um in any of the other cultures um or stories uh, up to this point so it was a nice little touch obviously the other, the other yeah. areas do have schools but they operate differently so it's not as regimented and you must do this at this time as, uh, as the fire nation which is the main point of the episode really it's establishing um the foundation of understanding for the fire nation culture and how different it is from the rest of the world and how it's not and this is my favorite thing about the episode it's not all evil emperor types you know these are real people in a real world just living their lives and having to go about it the the way their society is dictating um, and they are mm. dictating as we see from the classroom scenes i think i really appreciate what this episode it, like the themes that it implies more so than how it was executed necessarily because when you really think about it like when you're when when it's wartime and you're part of like either a nation planet whatever and your know, war is going on and you're just a quote-unquote civilian generally speaking you're only exposed to the quote-unquote worst that the other side has to offer through news propaganda whatever you want to call it and because of that it's very easy to forget that when you're dealing with an entire culture an entire nation or planet again whatever there are people on that side who, again, are just people, you know, like you. You're just going about your day to day and they're only exposed to a very limited uh, de degree to what your what your world is in the sense that, again, they only hear those same things. So it's like it, it really it kind of really goes to show that difference in perspective. Now, again, I, I, I don't think this episode necessarily like I feel like this episode could have been a lot more than it actually was, because when Aang gets in that school and he actually is exposed to that culture, Again, like you said, Callan, you do sort of get the sense of like how different it is. But at the same time, you know, I feel like they really could have touched upon the sense of war and how that really affects culture in more in more ways than just battles in that sense. They, they could have definitely taken a different route with the tone. They could have had a lot yeah. of small, like small scenes. With like, I think I think actually we could have used like at least two episodes of Aang actually being in that school. And actually, because like, there, again, there's even this one scene during a lesson where he brings up the air nomads and like all the classmates are looking at him like, what the hell? Mm. And I feel like if I feel like if we had more scenes like that and that contrast, it really would have sort of, I, I guess you could say um sold the message a lot more clearly because that's really kind of all we get in that sense and again i felt like that's something they could have played around with much more in depthly again to show that these people in many ways despite the fact the atrocities that their nation has committed these are still just regular people you know what i mean yeah i, I think they get the base idea of the regular people side across very well but you're right in terms of like the, the tone because they, the tone was obviously very charming very light very humorous mm -hmm. so it's, it is a filler episode ultimately um they they because of that choice they lose the opportunity to show scenes like you know tragic scenes or sad scenes of like the, the people suffering under the the regime effectively of the fire nation at the moment i mean a different way to what we've seen before um but at the same time i i, I that would all, i would have almost put that to a separate episode which is kind of what they do mm -hmm. with the following um set you know they, they go through and show the kind of dark side of the of the, of the fire nation here they're for whatever reason, they're very much trying to focus on a lighter tone and kind of getting just a, a lighthearted adventure in before all the tragedy and darkness happens later on in the show. Because the f second half of book three very much is like that darker tip, a uh, dip, even outside of the finale and and um, mm. and war situation. Just on an individual, personal level, each each solo episode is very much rooted in that kind of darkness, so that that, that darker tone. Um, but yeah, I, I, they definitely could have done more with this. I think it's it just again going to that ch that choice of of lightheartedness and charm. They they lost a lot of the opportunities there, but they mm. still got they still got the basics across there. You know, the, the idea of um the Fire Nation uh, uh, propaganda and, and brainwashing and and the regimented style and and the the cultural clashes of lack of freedom and and self expression. So that was all put across. So they did well. Yeah, with what I think they had. I I don't think I share the same criticism actually. You know, I, I think I'm okay with the what they do because. 
you, you, to me, you, you say that these are all regular people, and I agree for the most part, but the teachers, with the exception of maybe the music teacher, they they are obviously like the product of like the society because they're adults and they're in that mo- mode where they're like it's their job to enforce as well as teach and you, mm. you know what I mean and they're not even they are not w- what we think of um, as as teaching or or as and as well the act of learning and like the whole Socratic method and all those sorts of things that is not what we're doing. This is you come sit here and we tell you the way the world is. Mm. It's it's it, this is a totalitarian regime ultimately. You know they even have that bit where they all stand up and like uh, you know chant at the like, the the overseer's their, photo, their pledge of allegiance, uh, take, you, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> to him. You know, like um, and uh, it, it, it's it. There are bits that are played for comedy, like when like when Aang doesn't know the words to so like what they're supposed to be saying. You know, and um, and it, it's it's funny, but ultimately. There's also that dark undercurrent of like what they're doing, you know. Um, I I like that. And there, if it, I would agree with you if the show didn't um, that this would be like a downside if the um, show didn't play with any of this. But it does because um, Zuko explains all this later on. He is the product of this. You know what I mean? Um, it's uh, what an amazing life. We, we have like the mm. we have we have the Fire Nation. I'm sorry, the Avatar and the Fire Lord um, episode where he learns a truth that no. Um, that, that is he doesn't even know who his family is you know what i mean the fact that we if it's not convenient to the narrative we're spinning it's not a part of our history you know what i mean mm. um uh it, it, it's it, 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 and like you just said what an amazing lie that was the whole, this this is a generational uh like campaign um against the world but also on the fire nation's people like you know what i mean and, and that's the way dictators operate so um, I, I kind of like that it is a little bit more, not necessarily, I'm not praising it for being lighthearted. I just like the low scale version of it that you see through like, because because you wouldn't get into like the nitty gritty or the grand scale manipulation in the classroom setting. That's like the bottom rung of like where this sort of thing mm. starts, you know, so you're, you're just seeing it the way that a kid would. Um, and it's enough. It's enough of a grain or like like sort of seed that he's planted that like when they're at recess, they're all like looking at him and staring like he dared to say that or like or like or or even is it true or is he crazy or or what? You know what I mean? So it's like that example. Right. And he is an avatar. I like the the as well as an Arab nomad. So I like that he was there 100 years ago. He does know better. He He just can't say that. But he's not in a way without really saying I'm the avatar and you all need to take heed right now. He's kind of connecting with them on a human level, you know, yeah, he's and going like for the this is and minds it, approach of yeah. trying to get their, them to see their own, not just um, a different culture, but their own culture in its original form or in its previous form. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the fact even down to the dance moves later on that he's showing them their their old five hundred dance moves, like, and then they fit the culture or just the visual style of them. He's he's actually got an, uh, an objective here. It's not just Ang being like lighthearted and silly. So that is obviously happening as well. Um, it's uh, it's actually showing. He wants to like broaden their perspective. Yeah, the exactly. World, and know? it's a very Ang objective to have in the first place as well. This is this is who he is. Is what it's what he brings. Um, not that other people haven't as well, but it's what he brings to the Avatar role. It's that it's that connection with people. Um, yeah, his his. And it's not just. It, it could be you could look at it, and a kid would if they were watching this. Is just as simple as oh, he's teaching them how to have like fun. Mm. But there's more to it than just that, you know. Yeah, it's self-expression um, and, and sense of individuality. Yeah, and like just like and... bringing like an antidote to all this sort of engineered austerity that's been bred into the, this culture. I mean, and, and to to the point like um, these people are not evil; they're just the product of the the society, right? Like yeah. the, the teacher. Mm-hmm. The one thing I like about the the teacher, the main teacher, is when he says he has a scar, scar. is like his excuse. Yeah, she knew, lets him yeah, keep yeah, it. You know what I mean? Say, yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's not like, um, just trying to shame him in front of the class you know she does actually mm-hmm. have some compassion in her it's like oh well very well then and just sit down you know she's not a nice else. person yeah. but she's not and never, yeah mm. and it never really comes off like he has like a personal grudge against them for doing what they do he just kind of understands that like like you said this is kind of just what they believe and he just kind of goes along with it you know? yes mm-hmm. yeah that's another side of actually the kind of the gentle maneuvering around that ang's doing he's not taking umbrage with anything or not most of it um the way he could be doing is like, oh that's the way you do things now well here's a you know, this is what I think should happen. Here's a better way. You know, he's he's presenting mm-hmm. an alternative, their own, you know, history as an alternative um to these kids and not just lashing out at the system as it is, which is very very young. It's very but respectful. He's he's letting them make their own decisions and come yes. to their own conclusions yeah. on how they can 
how they can broaden their perspective. It's not like he's saying you must think this way, obviously, because exactly. that wouldn't make any sense. Exactly. And obviously, the he's constrained thing... by his own, the fact that he has to hide who he is. So there's that level mm -hmm. as well. But yeah. that isn't why he's doing it. You know, if he didn't have that that part of the component, he'd still be just as respectful and kind of balanced mm -hmm. about it, which is one of the things I like about Aang. The one thing I wish that they had played with a little bit more is the fact that the last time he was here, it was like a hundred years ago. Yeah. So all his terms are like, I, I, they, they look a little yeah. bit like when he's saying Hotman, Hotman, they're all just yeah, like, like, what? Oh, okay. I yeah. wish somebody... <laughs> I wish like an old man had like walked up to him and been like, you like sharing the same slang or whatever. And like a bunch of kids are like, what? <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. Like, cause he's so out of time, you know, like uh, with, with this area, which is a cool little detail as well. The mm. fact that, that everything he knows about this is a hundred years out of date. I mean, it could have been used to play for a bit more comedy, but it's not really a complaint. That's just something I would have loved. I was to say, uh, building off that, I think it's worth pointing out, like while he's at the school, he's in, he, he's under a false name, obviously. He impersonates Kuzan, Kuzan yeah. who yeah. was, a friend of his from the fire nation and it actually kind of makes me wonder it's like because obviously we never like really see like what kuzan was all about we don't get like a flashback or anything in this episode but at the same time it kind of makes you wonder it's like okay how much of this is just him kind of going along with it and how much is him actually trying to emulate who kuzan was back in those days and it kind of makes you wonder like okay what was this person like and how did ang gel with him in that way you know because it's like i mean i'm not very familiar with the like avatar expanded universe do we ever get anything with, with I don't that believe character so i don't believe i'm so. the wrong person and, to ask because i don't read like the comic books and yeah, that's a okay. lot of what and it, I'm, um, I'm just curious but, and i've only like yeah. brushed against that world so um so yeah, i couldn't confirm yeah. but i don't think it's the impression the what, what i like like the impression is, I had of, of yeah. Aang's life is that even before he knew he was the Avatar, because he split pretty quickly after yeah, that, is that a, because of the way that the Air Nation is formed, I think that just as part of their tradition is is you you visit each one. And in the course of doing that, that's why they're Air nom Nomads. You visit mm. the rest of the world just exactly. in, in the course of what you do. So he's had friends in every nation. That's how you met Bumi. Um, you know, so mm. Kuzan was probably just another one of those, you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. I'm just saying it would it would have been interesting if we had gotten like a flashback or something, just to kind mm -hmm. of see like what this person who this person was and what he was like. And it to be fair, it actually would go some ways kind of showing like, hey, the Fire Nation wasn't always like how it is now. Like, you know, through mm -hmm. Kuzan, you could potentially see how that nation was like before him. And like, obviously we get that later on with like, you know, the, the flashbacks with the other avatars and whatnot. But I'm just saying like, I, th I do think it would have been interesting to see like how that perspective would have been held by just a quote unquote normal person, which Kuzan is implied to have been. So again, I'm not trying to say that it's like a major, major also, downside or anything. Um, I just, I think, I think that's something they maybe could have played with a little. You well, know? It was, I bet it if they hadn't already done it with Boomy, yeah. I bet they would have had him show up because people often yeah. do live like a hundred plus years in show. this world. Yeah, yeah. That, that was mm -hmm. the thing. A point I was going to make before Evan said about Kusan as well is that I like the fact they didn't do that. It seems obvious that of course they couldn't do it twice, but also other shows would have done. I, I like the fact that we didn't mm -hmm. get the oh look, here's old Kuzan still alive, or um a, a massively in depth flashback or anything. I I like that they kind of skimmed it. I agree with Evan; they could have done more. I would have liked like the occasional like maybe just walking down a, a road to see his old house and just seeing it in disrepair mm -hmm. or seeing it just owned by someone new and seeing a bit of sadness from ang just that kind of personal touch of remembering his friend in like a small fond but also sad way and then move back into the main plot yeah. i think we could just give us some that. idea of like who this person was yeah and, and who he was to ang specifically you know it's very much a glossed over like oh i'm not i'm not missing my friends much because obviously he's been for that with boomy we kind of a full story based on it but um but just that little touch would have been nice as a little add-on for the episode um but yeah i like that they didn't go too overboard with it they just i just think they could have done a bit more um yeah. But yeah, so the, the next big thing is obviously the, the music and the fact that it introduces the dance issue. They don't they don't dance because that would be <laughs> too expressive and too individual, and we can't have that. And that obviously gives Anne. I, I love the the over dramatic teacher. Yeah, he was yeah. Great, <laughs> but, you know, mm, if you like, want, you may you know step. To I understand that sometimes the urge is just too great. You know, like you, <laughs> you know, like step, I mean, and it, march in place if you need. Yeah. To. And, even and even band looks, teachers tend to be pretty over exaggerated. Sure, in yeah. Their yeah. And he he even yeah. he even his character design just looks a little off too. Like he's very round and cartoonish looking. Mm -hmm. He just looks everything about him just kind straight of straight out uh, of the Simpsons. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he sold the comedy really. Absolutely. Um, Anyway, uh, so you, you have in your notes um, a, a number of Sokka scenes. Uh, he's in rare form as far as yes. the buffoonery goes in this episode. Um, a lot uh, of comic relief. Yeah, and also yes. I found the jokes landed as well. Um, the the reaction, <laughs> just I'm, I'm trying to be with you, Aang, but the idea, it, it just, it sounds really terrible. Like, and yeah, it does. When they're trying, when they're trying to hide and he's just jumping headlong into, a, into an institution like a school where they'll have active records of their citizens, you'd think. 
um yeah. it's just hilarious and, uh, and and everything along with that with, with the the parents um uh, dress up which to be fair they do a pretty good job of you know as far as uh as disguising kids to look like parents that was uh about as good as it could have been um despite they could have done a little bit more with the last name you know well, yeah, yeah fire <laughs> like really <laughs> yeah yeah like, like, that's like, 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 sapphire fire wang fire wang uh, something like you think you think the principal would have like thought that was at least a little it suspicious was, it was but... it was absolute lunacy well he like, did yeah he, i mean because yeah. he's all mr and mrs uh fire, fire. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, just like but at the same okay. time, this is, you know... This but is that's all we get, that's just so, it, you know? Yeah, it was ridiculous and stupid, but, you know, it's Avatar humor. It, at least the visuals kind of vaguely worked in theory from the cartoon style. But yeah, it's just, it was stupid, but it's funny. And I, I think that was the majority of, uh, of the soccer humor in this episode, or majority of soccer humor in general, but yeah. Um, as weird as it is, though, I actually think Sokka fits pretty well into the quote-unquote father role because he's always tried to <laughs> present himself. Well, let's just let me, let's hear me out. Like, like he's always, in many ways, he's tried to present himself as like a leadership figure in the sense of like trying to look after the people around him. So it's like, like again, while it is all comedy, it's like it, you do get the sense like, okay, I, I mean, again, I don't know if he ever has kids in the future or not because I've, I, again, I'm not no. familiar, familiar with later on, but again. Knowledge. Okay, maybe. But still, it's like, I, I do kind of like how he, even after they leave the meeting, he still kind of keeps that persona going for a bit. Like, he's like, okay, no more school for you, young man. Again, again, it's, it's played as a joke, but it's like, it, it feels well, like you that to, is something he would actually do, you know? Well, you have to understand about Sokka is that he's a method actor. And he was deep <laughs> right. in character. Like, he was very deep in character. So. But, but it's also true, obviously, it's played for laughs, and it's not touched on much, but he is the dad of the group. You know, that is his role. Mm -hmm. he, he's the dad joke dad, um, but he is the dad. And that kind of um is more reinforced again through the he's the comedy, he's the, the uncle he's not quite the dad well yeah yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, he did still go along with it. I mean, he didn't have to, but he he put his heart into it. So that yes, just that uh, just shows that just shows the lengths. Like, if nothing else, that just shows the lengths he's willing to go to you know keep this going. Mm. Um, but yeah, we get the obvious interactions when uh, Ang's kind of explaining that, and then they move on to the actual idea that he gets um, when in dealing with the kids that he wants to kind of bring out some of the creative freedom and expression and individuality. Let's throw a dance can. party with a yeah with a with a footloose sequence where he gets everybody dancing. Um, I I really like this. This is the best part of the episode, and obviously it's the point of the episode. It's the point. It's the bit everybody remembers. Um, it's a nice display of Ang's cultural kind of where where the, with all his he's out of date obviously, but he still has everything that you remember from back then. Um, it's uh, it's a nice, just light-hearted moment in the in the show in general. But also, it's the first time we get to see actual chemistry on screen between uh, Katara and Ang because outside of this moment yeah, for, and like blips for me, it's it's basically the only yeah. major example it, of the Katara relationship. It's not Time just like staring at peak. staring at each other with like little hearts in the background animated. <laughs> you know, it's actually, yeah, you know, it's, it's actually a moment. Peak. Yeah. peak chemistry for the two again i'm not invested in ang's love life because he is 12 yes. and and really like i mean and the fact that she's 14 you go well she's 14 is like yeah but that's when people in real life start really kind of um having something that resembles like actual real Developing. stages and yeah. in, 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 in moves in that direction like 12 it, it, it can't be anything but sort of frivolous you know what i mean it, it works for them because they end up being like this uh, lifelong thing but um that's largely off page and or that's after the series I, ends you that's know? all hindsight so, yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah it's like uh and i'm not really and i'm not really a shipper in general to be honest but this is as for all the katang fans out there this is like probably like your best scene as, yeah. um, as far as that goes and i just like the fact that um well of course like with uh you know tai chi inspired you know water bending master um uh uh Bagua uh, inspired uh, Ang, you know, like airbending Ang. Of course, they can dance. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a just a visual beauty, uh, martial arts. You know, as, mm -hmm. it's not just all about like the fighting. You know, it's like the aesthetics, the the, yeah, the, the symbolism, yeah, the, and also yeah. like the inspiration of it, the synchronicity, all of it. You know, so yeah, it's it's uh, a good fun little scene and uh, very beautiful. It's and one of those it's, cases it's all about. Sorry, I was just gonna say all around well animated. There's mm. very good animation in this um, sequence. Even the the one kid who was like a terrible, terrible yes, dancer. Yeah, very I mean, fluid. Animating very fluid. that? Oh my god! Mm. Like I mean, like uh, uh, that's that's great animation. And it goes but, on um, for a bit as well. It's not like it's a two second thing. He dances for a that while. That was somebody's little passion yeah. piece. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, they, yeah. yeah, they they worked on that. Yeah. 
No, it's definitely one of those cases where it's like the animation is really able to sell who these people are and what their mentality is without there actually being a need for spoken dialogue and just quite literally letting the music and the rhythm just tell its own story, which is, mm -hmm. you know, again, very a good way to do it when you're having a sequence like this. And it's nice as well because it's it's Ang's meth way of like calming Kitara down because like she doesn't know how to dance or at least feels like she doesn't know. And he's like, no, you can do this. Here, do, you know, try this. And it, it works for them. It's well, a nice it's, little branch it's the, the two the... of them public nature of it too as well yeah, which he's yeah, just exactly. comfortable with and she's that, that's why it works so well is because he's like leading it mm. and um uh in every other scene he's just like pining for her like in this it, it's like an actual you know moment that he's contributing to in a meaningful way exactly, i mean i know yeah. he does kiss her in other scenes but that's not what i'm talking about like that that's not really a thing you know what i mean like this is uh this is like a real like bonding moment like mm. where he's providing something meaningful um and and he's setting the example whereas in other um almost every other time she sets the tone usually just by existing yeah. you know what i mean so um <laughs> yeah he's enamored with her um but it, yeah mm. and it, it's just that, it's that real bonding moment i'm um, just because we glossed mm. over it before and i want to note as well we're speaking about the animation of the dancing um the yes. bagua scene um fighting the popular kid uh, yes yeah, the bully but, yeah <laughs> um <laughs> the in the middle thing that uh, needs special props as well because that's the best for my money single display of real life bagua um, obviously it doesn't happen like that in real in real fight but it, it just in terms of the visual display of the animation the moves that ang's doing the the mentality of how he's approaching him and how he carries mm. him that was beautiful we don't really get to see mm. that in a fight very often because it's a lot more bending involved usually which because that is the, the lowest tier, tier opponent really, he's ever really smooth it, well yeah obviously <laughs> yeah. obviously yeah. But, yeah. Ju but just yeah. that just that kind of the movements and the spinning and the staying in the circle and behind it you know that was that was a beautiful beautiful moment and um, for those who have the like the interest in the, in the martial arts side of things i love pure I, I love that he got called out for roughing up the student even <laughs> though he didn't do anything yeah. the guy like knocked himself over basically you know what i mean it's that yeah. classic turning up at the wrong moment. <laughs> it's like Potter, you. Well, which is a segue to the end of this because he shows mm. up and ruins everything. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, the teacher shows up and ruins everything. I like the. Uh, well, it's it's another one of those weird, creepy moments almost with the with the kids just surrounding. Um, do you remember the jet moment in book two when they, he's just? Uh, he's, I'm honestly, guys, I'm telling the truth, and they just start surrounding him in a creepy way. It reminded me of mm. that. They all kind of just put their headbangs on and and help. It was nice um, in mentality though, because obviously they're helping out the the new guy, the, the guy who's, who's helped teach them a little bit about the uh, freedoms that they can have, etc. But it was just a, it was a funny moment, um, and obviously the guards responding to the dancing as well. Also, <laughs> the musicians don't stop playing. <laughs> the teachers <laughs> turn up and they're still just going at it. Hey, hey, they got a gig <laughs> hey, to know, play. They started, yeah, They've yeah, got yeah. a gig. The Flamios. <laughs> Yeah. And again, it's like, I, I do like that you do definitely get the sense, like, again, while I don't think it was expressed necessarily as deeply or as like complex as they probably could have, you do get the sense that like, by the time the, the group leaves these kids, like, like they have like actually changed somewhat as people. And it kind of makes mm. you, it kind of like, I, again, it's kind of like food for thought, like, okay, where are these kids going to go later on after the war's over? And like, what kind of people are they going to grow into? It just kind of leaves that there's kind of that air of like, oh, hey, maybe, maybe something will come of this, you know? Yeah. I mean, I can't again I, I don't i can't speak to like what the world actually becomes after the show's done because i don't read very many of those comic books and, and i know that they do deal with the characters afterwards but just if you're just looking at it as a season of television it feels very beautifully complete because of the fact that okay ang's from like sort of grassroots example and then later on by the end of this we got a whole different fire lord with like a different mentality about just everything so um yeah you know it, it, it all feels very much like okay we've changed and, and are going somewhere better by the end of this totally there was a point yeah. to it all yeah, yeah they've given these kids a bit of bit of a head start than everyone else has had you know given them a bit, bit of hope um and that's kind of what, how the show ends it's it's, it's ending on a, a tone of hope and and just enjoying the uh the fact that they've made a change for once you know, they have changed hearts and minds right up until the point where of course it goes back to zuko and he's hiring sparky sparky boom man <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah but doesn't you know, necessarily um, end on the most positive point but yeah yeah the gang story does though it's what I mean. yeah <laughs> yeah there's there's not i mean as far as like an ang centric ep episode this is definitely like one of my top favorites yeah, you know because because he's obviously the title character a titular character but it's like it's such an ensemble piece show that he doesn't really have that many episodes that are squarely about him mm. but of the ones that he does have this is like a great one for me and also he's a kid so it's difficult to kind of play up the drama on his end without it being a true like plot relevant 
drama or a tragedy um you don't get much time mm-hmm. to play with the just the character bang as himself because the tone then has to jump away from the serious and jump away from the main um adventure style of the, of the you know the main story and plot so this is the first time mm-hmm. or one of the few times we get to see him just being who he is at his core being ang and um through the lens of him trying to do that from the mission of the avatar as well without it being this, these high stakes you know um battle situation it's just i want i want to reach these kids you know um and, and mm-hmm. make some friends and, and do some good and that's that's what it is i I think it works very well for that it's very charming very highlight hearted and uh and very enjoyable well with that why don't we sign off for this one mm-hmm. and get ready for our next one indeed evan <laughs> evan over 95 we hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you guys later matt uh awkward in, uh, outro number two uh, and i just stuttered <laughs> to make it more awkward uh thanks for watching and have a good one. i'm proud i still don't have an outro goodbye <laughs>